Hi everyone, my name is Milo Edor and I'm a freelance 3D artist currently living and working in Finland. Today I would like to uh, talk to you and uh, walk you through on how to create an animate LED style eyes for your character, uh, that being a robot or any other character that you may be working on. First things first, uh, let's go and take a look on the actual you know, final effect or animation that we're going to create in this tutorial. And don't judge me, this is not the most perfect animation that I've ever did so far, but you know, it's gonna you know, serve the purpose for, for, for this tutorial. So let's just uh, take a look at this. Alright, <laughs> that was a problem. Alright, so before uh, we jump into the actual tutorial, I would like to uh, talk to you a little bit about the project itself and what kind of issues I run into doing the project. Uh, when you think uh, about the uh, character animation, in most you know cases, characters like humans or any other creatures, they have one thing in common, and that uh, they have the face, right? Uh, in the sense that they have the eyes, mouth, and all that great stuff that you can work with, meaning that they have the actual geometry that you can manipulate and uh, you know animate and achieve the emotions. Well, this character was you know slightly different. It was designed that way that instead of having the mechanical you know parts for the mouth and the eyes, we would use some sort of uh, screen where the eyes and the mouth would go. And that brought another set of challenges for me. One of the issues that I saw coming was uh, how I'm going to have all these elements working together in the same scene. When you look at the, uh, uh, the actual, let me just open that thing one more time because it just crashed for some unknown reason. Right? If you, uh, if you go and take a look, uh, uh, of this uh, scrollable movements going around this area of the mouth, the actual mouth animation, uh, you know, so it's, it's the scrollable movement is happening there. This uh, effect was achieved, you know, in post effect as in, in uh, after effects, and that is the easy part. But I, then again, I had to have some reference in the scene where I can, you know, incorporate all these movements and keep them synchronized, like the speech itself that is happening here, uh, body movements, the hands, and all these things at once. Well, I guess you already, you know, at this point you recognize my problem and uh, that I was facing. So let's go and uh, and see how this this effect was uh, achieved and how you can use this same te technique in your 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 own projects. So from here, let's go and jump into the actual three D scene. Just open up, bring up the three uh, D S Max. All right. So here, there is the character itself. Uh, so what was the actual process? So first of all, I mean, it's, it's slightly different. Uh, maybe it's not going to work for everybody, in the, you know, in this particular, like in this particular case. But at least you can get some guidelines and ideas how you can actually, you know, use this technique for your own character, your own project. First of all, what I would do is I would go and based on the, you know, uh, sketches and whatnot. Uh, and uh, storyboards, I would go and uh, roughly animate the, the character itself without the actual, you know, uh, uh, eyes and the mouth. Uh, I would animate the body, you know, animate uh, like, like in this case, the character is already pre-animated, it doesn't really matter. So you would go and animate your character, you know, rough poses, or you can even go and polish the animation to its very end if you really like. Uh, but in this case, you know, it's more or less polished animation, so uh, that was the first phase. After this was done, what I would go and uh, first of all, here we have two cameras. One, it's the actual animation camera, which means you know, camera has uh, could have its own movements or whatnot. But that's the actual camera that, we, camera that we're looking through on the actual character and animation itself. That was the first one. But then again, when this was done, I would go there. And somewhere around the scene, doesn't really matter where, and unless it's not really, you know, on the, uh, on the actual character, I would just go, for example, in left view, zoom that out, I would go over here, and then if you go and press P on your keyboard, which is a perspective, uh, you're more or less in the same position, and now when you're unlocked, you can go and press Control C and create another, uh, like, new camera. You can go over here and call this camera uh, facial set, for example. All right, and then you go on top. You're gonna see the camera. It's over here. You can even select it all together and move it a little bit, maybe 
somewhere around here. So just not on, on the you know on the way of the actual character over here. Just move it on the way. Put it over here. Go in front maybe. Check it out that it's actually uh, positioned it nicely. Yeah, it's, it is. Now we jump into the uh, into the actual into the actual camera, which is you know the special uh, facial set. So when we are here in this um, in the facial set camera, looking through that, uh, this is the actual camera that we're gonna use only for uh, animation for uh, for the mouth and for the eyes. All right. So the, well, another benefit of uh, having this separate camera is when you uh, on your keyboard and press Alt W. For example, over here you can have your uh, uh, separate camera for only for the character, which is animation camera, and over here you can have the facial set camera. So. Um, in this way, you can you know jump from one to another and uh, you know work on the you know uh, the kind of two animations at the same time. So what we're gonna do over here, we're gonna use this camera, uh, create geometry for the eyes and for the mouth, do the animation, then render this out as a separate sequ uh, image sequence and bring this back, bring, bring this. Uh, uh, image sequence to the actual uh, After Effects, do the post work and bring that back on uh, our actual character, right? So this is this is going to be the process. So let's go and uh, jump into into it. Uh, first of all, let's go into the facial set camera, put it on the you know, full screen. And over here you can press T on your keyboard to go in the, in the top viewport. Press Z again, so you can actually find your camera over here. Uh, take the grid off, maybe it's a little bit on the way. And over here, uh, we're gonna go into the create and, for example, the box. And somewhere roughly around, for example, around here, we're gonna go and create the first eye. You know, just something that we can, you know, uh, start working with. Then we're gonna go on this camera, press C, jump into it. Okay, I guess it's still not on the way. We need to bring it a little bit, a bit back. Go back to facial set and here and uh, now we have the, the first eye uh, this can be you know any size and shape that you really like uh, the actual width doesn't have to be too big and make it just you know kind of a square uh, you can go over here jump and convert this to the edible poly uh, go as well to the hierarchy over here affect pivot point only and center to the object itself and then again, I'm gonna uh, shift drag this and make another copy of this. Uh, just copy, not the instance, the copy over here and press OK. So when this is kind of set up over here, before we continue in the actual 3ds Max, we need to go and jump into uh, Adobe uh, After Effects. And over here, we're gonna go first of all and create the actual template for those eyes. And what I mean, template is next thing. First of all, we're gonna go and go into the composition, new composition. And here, uh, kind of the only thing that is important, first of all, we're gonna determine the size or the resolution of the actual texture or uh, for this template. Uh, in this case, I, I was trying different different resolutions, but it came out that you know because in my animation, I'm gonna have a lot of close-ups, you know, I'm gonna see the the eyes and the mouth uh, moving quite, you know, quite close up in personal. So uh, I, I determined that, you know, okay, uh, 1280 by 720 is gonna be just fine. Uh, frame rate doesn't really matter, but it's gonna be only one picture at this point. Background color is gonna be black and hit OK. Uh, when your composition is created over here, the next thing is gonna be to go and uh, go over here, new, and uh, select solid. Under the solid, make it a comp size, and for the color, we're gonna choose something that is more of the dark gray color, like so. Press OK. And now with the uh, with this uh, solid selected over here, we're gonna go and uh, because this is gonna be in state like this, go up over here and press CC ball, and here we go. Take this CC ball action and just uh, drag and drop it in your in your on your scene. Uh, the size uh, over here when we are in the actual effects control, uh, for me, like uh, again, uh, I did a lot of testings uh, uh, over here, but I determined that, for example, the grid size or grid spacing uh, is going to be 15, and the ball size itself is going to be 45. All right, see where I'm going with this? 
So here we have this thing, which is like I said, you know, we did before many times that the actual CC ball action is pretty great for this type of, you know, if you want to create something purely in uh, After Effects, but it's not precise science. So for example, with, with these settings over here, we get, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, like uh, distortion over here. There is uh, empty space over here and it's over here, it's pulled to the very edge. So with uh, uh, this thing selected over here, we take, use your keyboard and your arrow, arrow keys to, you know, bring this just a bit down, like, like so. Yeah, now it's more or less in place. All right, so this is the first part. And the second part, if you want to take, you know, one step forward, you will go and create a new solid. It's going to be a comp size, but with a slightly lighter color towards the white, something like that. Hit OK. Uh, go back to the dark gray solid, the previous we created. And go into the CC ball action, press Ctrl C to copy that. Go back to the original, the newly created solid, and Ctrl V to, uh, to paste that. All right, now we just need to bring this a bit down. And for the ball size, we're going to make this uh, half of the original size. So it's going to be around 20. Yeah, that should be all right. And with this selected as well, it's going to use the arrow keys and move this in position somewhere around here all right see now and then we're gonna go under this layer and transform and uh, bring down the opacity to well, approximately 50 percent and uh, you know the, the, this way you created this kind of fancy new kind of 3d look to the, to the actual leds all right so this is pretty much, uh, you know, all, all the work that needs to be done so, so far in the After Effects. So when this is created, we'll go into the composition, same frame as, and say file. Uh, current settings, you know, everything could be left as it is. Uh, under the uh, output uh, mod module, we'll go over here, and instead of Photoshop, we will go and create JPEG. Over here, uh, click and save your file, make a position, choose the you know, the, the actual folder for it, and we're going to call this temp as a template. Hit save, render, yes, and that is done. So now over here, uh, we're going to go in 3ds Max, we're going to under, under the view, viewport background, viewport background select from here, files. Under the files, we're going to go and choose temp. All right, uh, match, uh, for example, bitmap, and uh, display background, hit OK. Right now, this is our template that we're going to work with. Uh, uh, first of all, make sure that you're looking through the actual save frames, which means Shift and F, which I am already. So you have all these borders and everything is you know set as uh, correctly. Yeah, and another thing, you actually, when you're already, oops, let's jump. Uh, when you're already here in this, uh, this facial set camera, you need to, another thing you have to go and just for, for, for this camera, you need to go into the render settings and uh, set up the actual resolution that you're looking through, which is, you know, in my, my case is already set up, but the, the template that you already created, which was uh, 1280 by 720, we're gonna uh, go and uh, type that resolution in over here. So when the, the, this is, you know, set up, you're gonna have the exact same representation and scale for the actual texture that you previously created in the uh, After Effects. So when that is done, we're going to go and position our eyes that way that, the, um, for example, uh, I don't know, uh, somewhere around, let's say around here, maybe like so, and change the size so the actual, uh, uh, so the actual box covers exactly uh, a, 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 you know, a number of the balls that you, you know, determine that it's, uh, it's all right, in this case it's three by three. I guess, you know, the position is more or less fine. You can, you know, really go and uh, experiment with this. I mean, your, your eyes can be even, you know, circular or whatever you feel like. Uh, with this uh, created over here, we're gonna go and do the same thing with this eye over here. And, uh, you know, push it a little bit inside like so, and a little bit down like so, and a bit up like so, all right. So roughly now there's your eyes. So why is this important is that when you render this, like before I did a lot of tests, 
uh, that's that the, uh, for example I, I had this more or less kind of around here without using the actual template I had them you know probably uh, maybe this square was around here and uh, this this square was roughly around here well th that is fine might look um, fine when you're not having this uh, this template when you render this sequence image sequence and you bring it back to the um, after effects and you apply this uh, the, the same effect uh, yeah this the, it didn't work out because the distortion of the eyes was just uh, it was just weird because then in, in some cases you will have some um, of the LEDs you know uh, being kind of colored which means they're lighting up uh, like for example this tree or when you're looking through this when you have this tree and this tree and this tree but then again you will capture as well this tree over here which is not maybe the case with this one over here and, and you know it just looks weird because this one is wider or bigger this one is smaller and so forth and so forth so let's bring this back so that's why I was you know I, I find out that I need to create this template and follow this kind of strictly so when I render this out and bring it back to After Effects it would just you know work, work nicely so when we uh, with the eyes created I would go then and uh, <coughs> shift drag this uh, to make it another copy and position it somewhere around here and start messing with the uh, vertices so I can create the actual mouth uh, which you know uh, as well with a lot of experiments I did I you know and as well with the uh, art director uh, uh, giving me you know uh, directions and as well with the suggestions we find out you know like this is going to be the, uh, the actual size of the mouth in the uh, you know when the character is actually not talking or not smiling whatnot this is going to be the original size and uh, the, the, this is enough for starters so okay so the, the, when this is when this one was created the next thing would be to shift drag and create another copy uh, which is gonna be uh, the, the, another geometry that we're gonna manipulate and create this kind of uh, right you know kind of wave format kind of type of the of the geometry around here that we can actually animate so with this thing created over here as a copy what I would go now and uh, go into the uh, uh, wireframe mode with selected uh, uh, shape over here I would go and create separate uh, let's see five six seven uh, maybe something like six maybe seven like so let's try it Maybe it's not perfect, but then we can go in and pull this in place. And soon enough, you're going to see why this is important as well. Uh, taking this in place and maybe this one as well and this one as well. Oh, just a bit like so. All right. With this thing created over here, uh, we can go in the polygon selection, uh, press P, zoom in. Uh, go in shaded mode and see uh, and start extruding these things so so they actually you know you achieve your you know your your effect. Uh, go back to the actual facial set so we can see the actual measurements and what we're doing. It extrudes and yeah, this is like ten millimeters looks uh, about right over here. Same thing we can go there. Well, maybe gonna extrude this extrude this first one one more time. So the next one is gonna be a bit smaller, maybe only one time. Extrude it, skip one. I mean, this is really like up to you. How you wanna create this? Uh, so yeah, pretty much. And then another one just next to that. So we're gonna go extrude it maybe uh, two times. So we would start, you know, messing up with geometry, create something that it looks decent and appropriate for your needs uh, maybe this one as well all right so when we go back into the actual facial set camera this is this is the first thing you see where I'm going with this this is the actual first first uh, piece of, uh, of the geometry that we're gonna you know start working with it and then, then from there I'll go shift drag this make another copy uh, I can go and position it roughly somewhere around here it doesn't really matter at this point uh, so, go around this one and start changing the, the, the shape over here maybe I would bring one, uh, this one around here and uh, this one as well sort of like variations of this same shape 
Uh, maybe then uh, I'm gonna take this one, bring it back like so. Take this one and bring this inside as well. I'm gonna go and select this one and this one and extrude it because it's always the, the, the same like 10 millimeters from the previous extrude. I'm gonna just hit OK. Um, maybe, you know, uh, take this one and pull it down and same thing with this one, pull it back up. And um, so we just continue with this and create, you know, as much as you, you know, you need one of these. So another thing as well that I was using quite a bit because, it's, you know, uh, like I said, there's a, there was a quite a bit of speech in this, uh, this animation. I would go there and uh, in, under the uh, graph editors and the doc sheet, okay, takes time to load. Uh, I would go under the sound over here, double, double click uh, that and under the uh, files over here, I would go and select this file. Or well, in this case, this is a sample that I already used in this animation, but you know, in, the, in other cases, it can be an actual speech that was recorded, recorded by the actors or you know, whatever that may be. And we use this, draw that in over here, close that. And over here, you can already see there is a wave form type thing going on over here that you can actually see. And this is good because you already have like this kind of graphical uh, representation or where the speech is actually happening. So th this was the this was the, the thing that was using to actually animate this part of the mouth. So if you move you go a little bit forward. <laughs> Alright. So you can see like God, this is the first part of the of the animation of the actual speech. So what would, I would do is uh, select this one, well actually before that I would go and uh, select the render set, the setup and over here on the uh, area to, uh, region to render I would go and uh, do the region, alright, close that up and now uh, with this uh, box over here I would go and adjust this, you know, so that it fits the uh, just the region of the mouth when the actual animation will happen. Why is that? Well, because I mean, like this is this is my way of, of doing this. What you can do in this this uh, this thing, you can do it in two different ways. First of all, you can uh, go and render this whole screen, this whole camera at once, which in this case, you know, it's gonna bring all these um, kind of unnecessary things, you know, being shown in the render. But then again, of course, you can you know bring this into your After Effects and use the mask, invert that, and just hide everything else except this region over here. For me, I don't know why, but it was just much easier. <clears throat> at least during the, the time of the animation, so I can see actually where, you know, the, the, the actual speech bubble thingies, whatever, you know, waveform format was actually coming in and leaving out, you know, following the same timeline over here. So from here, I would go, let me just bring this back into place. All right, so now from here, I would go and uh, just for this, you know, geometry here, I would go out a key, set a key over here, and just by moving this, all right, so somewhere around here, so and on a, a keyframe or actually a time frame around four, I will go and hit a key keyframe over here. All right, so this speech, which is you know uh, maybe you know this is what is representing the actual bubble coming coming up. So we'll take this one and just you know move it you know out of the way. All right, maybe even before that. All right, so over here, when this is already moving in the way, we take this one, uh, hit the key frame over here. All right, following that, and this is already ending, so this, this part over here needs to be on its very end, at least. Right, you see? So th this, this part is probably following this waveform over here. Uh, when you're ready around time, time uh, timeline around 15, can move this out of the way completely. So the, next one, so the next one is coming, which is a little bit longer. So in this case, I would go and okay, since this is quite long, I would you know maybe use this one and just shift drag and create a little bit bigger one, like so. All right, go back to, to the camera. And just first of all, we can even you know go and attach this, so it's the the, the same geometry back to the camera, bring this somewhere, maybe, oh, maybe not so, 
the up keyframe. <laughs> Since I'm around here, this thing needs to be at the very beginning. <laughs> so this is where it's ending. I'm just gonna pull this so it's very and like so. <laughs> so there's another it's a chini. Uh, okay, maybe in this case. Right, so then it's another Jimmy saying over here. So drag and shift this one over here, make a copy, and just delete all the keyframes. Um, this piece, so I can just see. So now it's a Jimmy part, but it's actually already ending with this one. So let's add other key and move it out of the way. And now I'll bring in Jimmy so it's very and somewhere around here. Okay, I messed up the keyframe, so this thing is gonna be somewhere around here. Let's do that. Alright, so this piece is gonna hit the keyframe first, so it moves a lot in position. And Jimmy, move it out of the way completely like so. Damn, right, so this is the process of actually animation. So another thing that I would do is uh, just to make it a little bit easier. For example, if you're going back and forth between two different cameras, you know, I can just close this so we can actually a little bit more space. Let's go in the perspective over here. And one thing I would do is I'm going to just select the eyes. Because, I mean, you can select the mouth as well. It's pretty awkward if you can see, you know, this thing struggling in, in front of your character all the time. What I would at least do, I would take the, uh, the eyes, shift, drag this, and instead of copy, I would make the instance. All right, so with the instance selected, I'll go and probably, no, maybe not so, uh, maybe separately, I'm gonna take this fellow over here and bring it somewhere around there close to the character and move it back in a position like something like so you can scale it down so it really represents the actual character uh and the size roughly this is just the example put that in a place and the same thing with this thing move it there a bit up turn it around so it's positioning or facing the character as it should something like so scale it down as well and pull it back and like so right so with these two my uh, control select both of those and go and select and link take these two and link them to the actual mask or the face or geometry that's uh, being animated as well so in this case, what happens, you know, this one is following the, following the actual, you know, uh, body and the, the head and the, the, in this case, the, the whole face. And I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller. All right. So what is this beneficial, like I said before, you can go over here into the actual animation camera. And over here, you can select the eyes or one eye at once. And what happens actually when you select this one, and manipulate around here. <clears throat> the same thing was happening here. So now actually you can do the animation of the eyes and you can see the same representation in the, uh, in the animation camera and how that works in conjunction with the... So in this part over here, for example, damn, I would take a keyframe. Damn, so over here, we press the keyframe, a couple of frames forward and bring this down, go back and bring it up. This is how it works here, this geometry, uh, right? So, right, so you, see, you can see the result over here and over here at the same time. So this way, uh, it was uh, the, the biggest part of the job was done. Uh, I'm not gonna, you know, bore you with the, the animation more than this. Uh, because I already created one uh, before, so I'm going to go under the layers and just hide the facial and the actual mouth. Uh, there's the third camera that I created before, facial template, right? So this is the actual 
uh, uh, you know, template and electro animation that I used in a, in a previous animation that you saw already, for example. And over here, another thing, I just need to change this area around here. So let me go and see uh, the views, uh, duple background, duple background, and choose the previous one that I created. Uh, this is the sec project, now under here, tutorials, LED lights, and uh, I'm going to choose this template over here and just show it over here. So I'm going back and seeing where is the map. Uh, go over here and this region one more time and bring this into the actual position which is just a bit that it's a little bit out of place so the actual height is here and here and hit ok so what we will do next <clears throat> like I said you know you can do this in, a, in one pass or two different passes like I did in two different passes I would go first of all and uh, for example I would go and render only this region Damn. as the animation progressed, like as a separate uh, JPEG sequence. When that was done, then we'll just go and uh, hide this uh, this geometry, for example, over here, just go under the layers. It's very important to have layers, it makes your life a lot easier. And I'm gonna go and hide the mouth, and there's only the eyes. Inside of the eyes, there's a little bit of animation. And uh, under the render settings, I would just go and change this to the view. Uh, do the uh, uh, the actual active segment re rendering over here, and of course save the file. Render this sequence uh, as it is, you know, like all the all the all of the uh, all the keyframes. And uh, when that was rendered, I'm gonna jump back now to the actual Adobe After Effects. Here is the exactly same template that you created it using the uh, in the uh, uh, 3ds Max. So everything is set over here. Uh, under your project over here, we go and import. We import first of all, uh, like I said, for example, here is the mouth. I'm gonna select the, the mouth that I that rendered as a footage, JPEG sequence. Open that up and in the composition, just uh, close this and just bring it on top of everything, right? So now it is here, position as it should be. Uh, the blending mode over here, I used adds. And uh, you can see, you know, it's uh, positioned correctly and so fine. So the next thing would be going to the, for example, the gray solid over here, under the effects and copy one more time, control C, and go under the mouth layer, control V, and you get this one. Okay, it's a little bit distorted, but it's nothing that cannot be fixed with a little bit of movement with you on your keyboard and position right where it should be. That's one thing. Another thing is bringing the eyes another image sequence and uh, import files go over here there's the mouth and here's the eyes here's the sequence jpeg sequence press ok now bring this one on top of this one doesn't really matter i can be under it as well the blending mode over here type to add and uh, well under the effects because it's already copied you can go and control v and apply the same effect here move it a little bit down in the position and uh, here we go. There is your eyes ready to be rendered out. Uh, you can go even more fancy on, on this one. Select something that you represents the eye, uh, the eyes and the mouth at the same time, like so. And you can add glow or you know any other type of effects. For example, if we go and type glow over here, double click. Well, actually, let me select both of these. And now I just drop it on, on top of the uh, both of the layers. Or is it on both? No, it's not. So it's not in the mouth. Go and uh, put that as well there. So now we did with this thing you know, over here, you can go and uh, adjust the glow, maybe change the color, whatever you want to do and what you need to do. Do a little bit like this version, like so. Same thing for the eyes, like so. Go on radius. Maybe something like that, right? And when that is done, it would go over the uh, composition and make a movie and we render this sequence as it is, for example, as a JPEG sequence. I use the JPEG sequence, which will work fine, work fine perfectly for me. And this is rendered. Then uh, the final thing you need to do is, uh, well, first of all, you can go over here in the views, you put background, show background, hide that if you need that. Uh, you can even you know, go and uh, hide this 
this fellow over here and the uh, copy of the eyes as well and hide that one. Uh, but my character over here, the mask that I was using as a placeholder for the eyes and all that has two different amoeba like, attached to each other. So I should select the first, uh, first uh, geometry over here and go and hide that. This is the actual thing that it has uh, UBMAP assigned to it. Now I just press M your keyboard, uh, select the material, it can be standard or V-Ray, whatever that you're using. And over here under the fuse, you go and select the bitmap. And uh, for that, we're gonna use the facial and all formats. And here's our rendered sequence for the After Effects. Just uh, be sure to select the sequence over here and press OK. You're gonna get this prompt that is showing you and you know asking you for the, the, the different settings. Uh, you can use the default. Just press OK. And under here, when you're under the bitmap, press that and sign, and that is done. And hide the actual original mask on top of that and maybe these two guys you can hide and um, here is your character uh, with the uh, facial animation now you can go and just go I'm gonna well, actually let's leave the sound as well I'm just gonna scrub to the timeline God damn Jimmy this is some serious going on shit right and everything matches everything is perfect and fine uh, you can just go and uh, do render settings maybe Take this guy, and uh, maybe it's another original environment. You can export this guy with all the textures, bring him to the original scene, hit render, and uh, there you go. Uh, another thing, uh, for example, to remember uh, is a couple of things actually I didn't mention maybe uh, in a, during this tutorial is the, uh, the actual settings for the time. Time configuration of here. I was working in a film which is 24 frames a second. Uh, why is that important as well? Because if you render this sequence, if you first just go into the facial set over here and you render this sequence, for example, it's uh, 24 frames per second, you have to go in the Adobe After Effects as well. And when you import that sequence over here, sequence uh, one and two, where, for example, eyes and the mouth, um, the uh, After Effects assumes or guess the actual uh, settings for that uh, the sequence that you brought in. So you have to go under the uh, click on the, on the actual sequence before you drag it into the uh, actual timeline over here. Click uh, right click inter uh, interpret uh, footage and click main. I'll just bring that here and over here assume uh, this frame. I mean it's quite funny word to use like assuming. Uh, in this case it was correct because I was using this previously but uh, in this case if you for example rendering your sequence in uh, 3ds max as a uh, 29.97 or something like that. Uh, the original settings, I guess, as far as I remember, in After Effects, it could be like 24. So uh, there, there, there could be a conflict. So just remember to uh, uh, check on what uh, time frame are you working in, in, um, in 3ds Max, so you can use that same settings and uh, type it in over here. At that time, when when that's done, you can take this and bring it into the time uh, uh, timeline over here. And when you render it out, it's gonna you know match the set settings from the uh, uh, from 3ds Max. So uh, yeah, this uh, this is the thingy we created over here. This is the character, and uh, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial at least a little bit, and I brought you some perspective on uh, and uh, how how to create your own character and the uh, the eyes for the character. I uh, hope uh, I'm gonna meet you, you know, see you soon in the next tutorial. My name is Mila Error, and uh, signing out.